In the crucible of wartime innovation, Britain dared to rewrite the rules of piston engine engineering and birthed the Napier Sabre. Hidden within its hulking H24 block lay an intricate ballet of sleeve valves, twin crankshafts, and compressed ambition. Designed by Frank Halford and produced by D. Napier and Son, this liquid-cooled powerhouse emerged in 1938, ultimately delivering up to 3,500 horsepower in its late war iterations. Deployed in aircraft like the Typhoon and Tempest, the Sabre was both Britain's answer to aerial dominance and a mechanical dare, audacious, complex and unforgiving. It promised blistering speed, rapid climb and raw force, but demanded a punishing price in maintenance, manpower and patience. A powerhouse born from urgency, Britain's bet on the Sabre. In the tense pre-war years, Britain's air ministry knew its next generation of fighters needed unprecedented speed, climb and firepower. Napier, long established with its reliable Lion engine, was tasked with creating something entirely new. Enter Frank Halford, whose concept rejected the conventional V-12 in favour of a liquid-cooled H-24 layout. This design stacked two flat-12 engines together, driving a common crankshaft system, enabling a short, compact form ideal for aerodynamic cowlings. The real gamble lay in using sleeve valves rather than poppet valves. This promised higher RPMs and cleaner airflow through the cylinders, giving exceptional power for its size. The first Sabre prototype ran in January 1938, producing roughly 1,350 horsepower, already competitive with the best Allied engines. By 1940, development was in overdrive. The Air Ministry envisioned fighters capable of intercepting bombers at low altitude and outrunning enemy escorts. The Sabre's projected power of over 2,000 horsepower was irresistible. But Britain was betting on a radical, unproven concept. Sleeve valves demanded manufacturing precision few factories could sustain at wartime speed. The compact design left little margin for cooling, and the sheer mechanical density made servicing a nightmare. Still, the promise outweighed the fear. Napier's engineers pushed ahead, racing against the gathering storm over Europe. The Sabre was not just an engine, it was a strategic gamble. If it worked, it could power aircraft capable of changing the course of air combat. If it failed, Britain risked pouring scarce resources into a machine that might never survive the front lines. Sleeve Valves and Mechanical Ballet The Napier Sabre's defining feature and greatest engineering risk was its use of sleeve valves. Instead of traditional poppet valves that opened and closed above the cylinder head, each piston sat inside a thin, rotating metal sleeve. This sleeve moved in a carefully timed elliptical motion, aligning ports cut into its surface with intake and exhaust manifolds. The result was a smooth, unrestricted gas flow, reduced turbulence and the ability to operate at far higher RPMs without valve float. In theory, this design offered clear advantages. More complete cylinder filling meant more power per displacement. The absence of valve springs reduced moving part stress at high speeds, noise levels were lower, and the compact head design allowed a tighter, more aerodynamic cowling, critical for high-performance fighters. But the Sabre's execution exposed the brutal difficulty of making sleeve valves work in combat conditions. Each sleeve had to be machined to incredibly fine tolerances, then nitrided to resist wear. Wartime mass production often compromised these standards, leading to warped sleeves, poor sealing and catastrophic seizures. The lubrication demands were extreme. Any oil starvation could destroy the system in minutes. Bristol had already pioneered sleeve valve technology in its radial engines, but adapting it to a high-revving, liquid-cooled inline H24 was an entirely different challenge. Early Sabres were as temperamental as they were innovative. 
mechanics faced steep learning curves, pilots faced unpredictable failures, and engineers battled constant design refinements to keep the concept viable. It was a mechanical ballet, beautiful when it worked, disastrous when it stumbled. Raw power meets fragile reality, early struggles in the field. When the Sabre entered squadron service in 1941, its power was undeniable, but so were its flaws. On paper, the Sabre II's 2,000-plus horsepower made it one of the most formidable piston engines in the world. In reality, early examples often failed after just a few dozen hours of flight time. The problems began on the ground. Starting the Sabre required careful priming, precise throttle settings, and patience. Any misstep could cause a violent backfire, with flames shooting from the air intake. Mechanics stationed with early Typhoon units quickly learned to keep fire extinguishers within reach. Even when started cleanly, engines sometimes suffered from low oil pressure, overheating, or sudden loss of power during taxi. In the air, the Sabre's aggressive performance could mask its fragility, but only for so long. Manufacturing debris left inside the engine could shatter pistons mid-flight. Warped sleeves could seize without warning, locking the engine solid. Field maintenance was complicated by the engine's cramped layout, which buried spark plugs and made basic servicing a labor-intensive ordeal. For pilots, the Sabre was both a thrill and a gamble. The Typhoon's blistering acceleration at low altitude gave it a fearsome edge in combat, but the thought of engine failure over hostile territory haunted every sortie. Engineers worked frantically to improve manufacturing quality, redesign problem components, and train maintenance crews in the Sabre's quirks. In its early years, the Sabre's legacy was as much about survival as speed, a machine that could dominate the skies one day and ground itself the next. The Typhoon's heart, Sabre power unleashed. Once the Sabre's reliability began to stabilize, its raw potential was unleashed through the Hawker Typhoon, a fighter-bomber purpose-built to exploit its strengths. The Typhoon's broad wings and rugged frame could carry heavy armament, while the Sabre's compact high-output design provided unmatched speed and climb at low altitude. By 1941, the Sabre II delivered around 2,090 brake horsepower, enabling the Typhoon to intercept enemy aircraft and perform devastating ground attack missions. Armed with 420mm Hispano cannons and the ability to carry bombs or rockets, the Typhoon became one of the most feared aircraft over the Western Front. The Sabre's high-torque output allowed rapid acceleration from low speeds, a vital asset when pulling out of strafing runs or evading enemy fire. As development continued, later Sabre versions pushed past 3,000 bhp with water methanol injection and improved supercharging. The Typhoon evolved into the Tempest, a sleeker, faster design that made full use of the engine's growing power reserves. The Tempest excelled at low-level interception, famously hunting V-1 flying bombs and tangling with late-war German fighters. In these airframes, the Sabre finally delivered on its promise. Its compact form let designers minimize frontal area, its high power-to-weight ratio kept performance competitive even late in the war, and its smooth operation when properly maintained made it a pilot's dream in combat. The same engine that once kept crews up at night was now the heart of Britain's low-altitude dominance. The Typhoon and Tempest had their flaws, but with the Sabre at their core, they were machines to be feared. Cooling Nightmares and Maintenance Battles Even at peak performance, the Sabre remained a demanding master. Its H24 layout packed 24 cylinders and two crankshafts into a compact block, limiting airflow around critical components. While liquid cooling helped control temperatures under normal operation, aggressive combat flying often pushed the system beyond its limits. Rear cylinders, shielded from direct airflow, ran hotter than the front. 
Prolonged high-power climbs or tight turns could cause oil and cylinder head temperatures to spike dangerously. Overheating led to cracked heads, warped sleeves, and loss of compression. Engineers added cowl flaps and improved baffling, but the dense internal layout meant cooling was always a compromise. Environmental conditions compounded the problem. In Normandy, dust and sand from forward airstrips were sucked into intakes, scouring precision surfaces and accelerating wear. Mechanics had to work constantly to clean and replace filters, flush cooling systems and monitor oil quality. Servicing the Sabre was notoriously labour-intensive. Spark plugs were buried deep within the engine, sleeve valve timing required exact alignment, and even routine inspections could sideline an aircraft for hours. Crews often cannibalised damaged engines for parts to keep others flying. The Sabre demanded a high standard of care, something not always possible in the chaos of war. Those who mastered its quirks earned deep respect for the machine's capabilities. Those who underestimated it paid the price. Cooling and maintenance were never just technical concerns. They were the fine line between a sortie's success and a mission cut short by mechanical failure. From flawed prototype to wartime titan. By 1943, the Napier Sabre had crossed the threshold from experimental risk to operational powerhouse. Incremental improvements in metallurgy, machining tolerances and assembly line quality control began to pay dividends. The once temperamental sleeve valves became more reliable thanks to refined nitriding techniques and tighter production oversight. Supercharger upgrades improved high altitude performance while water methanol injection systems squeezed extra horsepower without sacrificing too much durability. In the Hawker Tempest, the Sabre's capabilities shone brightly. The Tempest's redesigned laminar flow wing, coupled with the Sabre 2IA and later IIB variants, delivered blistering speed at low and medium altitudes. Pilots could climb quickly, sustain high speeds, and unleash heavy armament on both ground and aerial targets. The engine's newfound reliability boosted pilot confidence. Sortie completion rates improved, and mechanical failures became less common, though never entirely absent. Maintenance remained intensive, but crews now worked with a machine that responded to their care rather than punishing them unpredictably. The Sabre's transformation was a testament to British engineering resilience under wartime pressure. It demonstrated that even a deeply flawed design could evolve into a frontline asset with persistence, innovation and sheer necessity driving progress. The days of the Sabre being more feared on the ground than in the air were fading. In its place stood an engine that could finally fulfill its promise, delivering relentless, decisive power at the sharp end of the war. Pushing the Limits – Late War Upgrades and the Race Against Time With the war entering its final stages, Napier engineers sought to push the Sabre beyond its already formidable capabilities. Late war versions such as the Sabre 5 and 7 incorporated improved supercharging systems, higher boost pressures and refined cooling pathways. Power output surged past 3,000 horsepower, placing the engine among the most potent piston designs ever to see combat. These upgrades gave the Hawker Tempest an edge in chasing Germany's latest threats. V-1 flying bombs, fast and difficult to intercept, fell prey to the Tempest's combination of speed and climb rate. In air-to-air -air combat, the Sabre-powered Tempest could challenge even the Messerschmitt Mi-262 jet, catching it in certain conditions, particularly during takeoff or landing. But this performance push came at a cost. Higher boost levels and tighter tolerances meant increased wear, demanding even more from ground crews. Fuel and oil consumption rose sharply, straining supply lines. And despite incremental cooling improvements, the engine still flirted with its thermal limits during prolonged high-power operation. Time, however, was running out for piston engines. 
Jet propulsion was advancing rapidly, and while the Sabre's enhancements kept it relevant until the war's end, it was clear the future of combat aviation lay elsewhere. The final Sabre variants represented not only the pinnacle of Napier's wartime engineering, but also the closing chapter of an era in which raw mechanical power defined air superiority. Legacy of a Mechanical Maverick The Napier Sabre's legacy is one of extremes, brilliant innovation married to chronic complexity. In its prime, it powered some of the most formidable Allied fighters of the Second World War, helping to secure victories in missions ranging from low-altitude ground attack to high-speed interception. Its compact, high-output H-24 design and sleeve valve technology remain engineering milestones, representing an audacious leap beyond the familiar V-12 paradigm. Yet the Sabre is equally remembered for its punishing maintenance demands, temperamental early service life, and the sheer logistical effort required to keep it operational. For every pilot who praised its thrust and responsiveness, there were mechanics who cursed its buried spark plugs, tight tolerances, and delicate sleeves. Post-war, the Sabre lingered in service for a short time before the jet age rendered it obsolete. Aircraft like the Hawker Tempest and the late model Typhoons became museum pieces, their once feared engines silenced except in the hands of restoration enthusiasts. Today, a handful of airworthy sabers still roar to life at historic aviation events, thrilling crowds with their deep, growling exhaust note, a living echo of wartime skies. Historians regard the saber as both a cautionary tale and an achievement to admire. It proved that radical design could yield spectacular results, but also underscored the risks of pushing unproven technology into combat too quickly. In the balance between performance and practicality, the Sabre often leaned toward brilliance at the expense of endurance. Still, its mark on aviation history is undeniable, equal parts triumph and warning. The Napier Sabre was more than an engine. It was a gamble, a statement, and a symbol of Britain's determination to push the limits of what was possible. From its rocky beginnings to its late war dominance, it embodied the relentless pursuit of performance, even when that pursuit came with steep costs. It gave the Typhoon and Tempest their fangs, helped shape the course of air battles, and left a legacy that still rumbles through history. Today, when one of the few surviving sabers fires up, it's not just metal and fuel coming to life, it's a piece of wartime spirit reborn. The roar carries with it stories of pilots, mechanics and engineers who dared to believe in something extraordinary. If you enjoyed this deep dive into one of history's most remarkable engines, make sure to like, subscribe and share. More untold aviation stories are waiting to be uncovered.